you want to start by introducing yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Amy. I work with JJ at LinkedIn, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, right now, I work on LinkedIn ads as um, an APM on our GI coach product. Um, so I think today we might be doing a more GI interview. So yeah, super excited to be here. Um, today, I will give you a product design uh, interview, and we just will do a little bit brainstorm. And um, if you have any questions or um, if you need more context, just feel free to uh, interrupt me and we can like discuss this problem together. Okay. Sounds great. Awesome. <laughs> and my question is, um, how do you want to improve chat GPT? All right. Can I use um like a notepad or something? Yeah, sure. Okay. Improve chat GPT. Um, is it okay if I start by asking some clarifying questions and just outlining some assumptions I want to make? Yeah. Okay, so for improving chat GPT, I'm assuming the objective is you want me to improve the user experience as opposed to things that are more on the engineering side, like prompt accuracy, relevance, response times, things like that. Mm. Um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, like chat GPT, we, sh we need to narrow this question down a little bit because they have like enterprises or like for consumers. Um, you can feel free to like choose whatever product that you feel more comfortable with. Um, and in, in terms of goal, I also, I'm also curious what type of goal do you want to focus on? Um, I definitely want to have, um, also have a focus on business goals. Either like you want to uh, improve um, the mode of performance or you want to like add more revenue or add more uh, users or user engagement to the com like company, whatever you uh, yeah. feel comfortable with. That was actually my next question, but you already answered it. I was going to ask what metric I'm optimizing for, whether it's like more sessions, user acquisition or revenue, but it looks like that's up to me to decide. Okay. Um, and then last question, is there a specific audience that you want me to solve for like enterprise or consumer, or is it up to me to decide? Up to you. Okay. Um, give me a quick second to write some stuff down. Yeah. Take your time. Okay. Um, so for today's interview, my objective is sort of I want to improve the user experience of ChatGPT. Um, I'll do consumer just because I think that's what most of this audience today is more familiar with. Um, and also, I think it'd be a fun challenge for me because I usually work on the enterprise side. So I think consumer would allow me to think in a different space than I usually think in. Um, as for metric, I want to optimize for revenue, because I think that's the goal of all businesses at the end of the day is to make money. But we can also do user acquisition with a downstream impact on revenue, since I think the way to earn revenue is to get more people using ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the audiences and use cases today, I'm thinking of the top three um, use cases for ChatGPT. I think one of them is sort of ChatGPT as a researcher. So whether you're like a knowledge seeker or you're looking for information online, I think ChatGPT is really good at sort of um, scraping information all over the web. And it's able to explain something to you or tell you more about this um, topic. I think number two, ChatGPT is really good at like content creation. And so right now today it can make you like email drafts. It can write you articles. It can even write books. You can be like, oh, write me this line of code or write me this SQL query that I can use to run. Or you can even like suggest like a travel itinerary for you. Um, and then I think the last goal is that ChatGPT is really good at is like right now it can summarize. And so you can give it like a meeting or long paragraphs of a lot of information and it's able to condense that information and provide you a very concise summary. Um, out of these three things, so researcher, content creator, summarizer, I think ChatGPT today does a pretty good job of summarizing. Um, I think it's like a very like simple, like one trick pony task. Uh, in terms of researching, it is also pretty good at 
sort of giving you all the information you need pre-2021 when it was built. And I think in terms of content creation, that is where it needs the most improvement. Um, because I think today it can generate drafts and skeletons, but there's still a lot of human intervention that's required in terms of giving you like a complete experience. So I think I'd probably focus on like the content creation use case of chat GPT for consumer. Does that yeah. sound good to you? Um, I have several questions. The first question is um, just want to clarify the goal that you want to focus on is to optim eventually optimize revenue, mm -hmm. uh, but you also like want to specifically focus on user acquisition. So basically like more user, you basically assume a certain percentage of like conversion rate basically. Uh, right. So you want to um, uh, drive more users for ChatGPT. Yeah, my strategy is to sort of identify a use case or niche that I think chat GPT isn't doing the best today. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we improve this specific use case that they can do better, we will get more user acquisition through that funnel. Okay, sounds good. And also, uh, when you talk about content creator, you talk about like providing a more complete experience. Can you dive deeper into that? Yeah. So I think in terms of today, like there are two main pain points of sort of the content creation use case for chat GPT. The first one is actionability. Like I think, you know, you can receive a lot of answers from chat GPT. It gives you an output, but as a user, you don't really know what to do with that information. And then I think too, like it requires human intervention to complete the cycle. So once you draft an article or a travel itinerary, or it generates like a line of code for you, you still need to go in yourself and like review the code or like book the flights or like preview and edit the article. So I think like that part is something that I feel like we can potentially work on a solution to maybe automate or make more efficient. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, so with that being said, I think I'm going to move on to sort of maybe generating some ideas for a product solution or strategy that we can move forward. Is that okay? Okay. Give me like another few minutes. Okay. Um, so I have a product strategy and I have three solution ideas. What we can do is I can go through all of them and you can pick the one that you want me to dive into deeper, or I can do a prioritization matrix myself and figure out which one I would most have the business case to invest in. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my overall, my strategy for chat GPT, I think going forward for improving it is I'd want to build integrations with other sites. What that looks like is I think there are three like solutions we can sort of pursue under this strategy. One would be like a chat GPT as your travel advisor use case. And so today chat GPT is able to find you your perfect itinerary, but what if chat GPT could find and book hotels, find and book flights, schedule activities, with local tour guides. I think this is especially really helpful if you don't speak the local language that ChatGPT can get this all done for you. So for example, let's say I want to travel to Spain and I don't speak Spanish, right? Like ChatGPT would be able to coordinate all my itinerary, book my hotels and flights and activities and reduce sort of the barrier for me because I don't speak the language and I'm not familiar with the geographical location. Um, second one is ChatGPT as your QA engineer. So today ChatGPT can write you like a line of code or a line of like a SQL query, and you still have to go and input that into your dev environment. What if we integrate ChatGPT with your dev environment and it can automatically like write test cases and check the code and submit like a PR on behalf of you, right? And then we would just like completely sort of make software engineering life like a lot easier because there is less things to do in that process. Um, and third idea is ChatGPT as your personal assistant. And so, like, I think both me and JJ today, as an example, like, we have so many meetings, like, we have so much to do, like, in our entire day. What if ChatGPT could read all of your messages and emails and sort of use the summarization use case to, like, prioritize your workload and schedule meetings, like, on your GCAL? So 
every day, like you log onto your computer, chat GPT already like tells you these are the top three things you need to accomplish for this day. This is what your schedule looks like. And like, these are the things that you're going to do. So I guess out of these three ideas, do you have one that you want me to dive deeper on? Do you want me to think of something else or do you want me to go forward with the prioritization matrix? Mm -hmm. I have several questions. So first, you taught me that you want to focus on user acquisition. And mm -hmm. the use cases that you mentioned, um, which one do you think have the most potential in terms of like the impact to your goal? Um, yeah. And also, I'm curious, uh, if you're looking for user acquisition, then what is the demographic of the audience that you're targeting who are not currently using the chat GPT uh, for these use cases? Like, What type of members are you trying to acquire here? Yeah. Um. So I think the best way to evaluate this is sort of one, look at TAM, like total addressable market, and then two, look at untapped TAM, like the amount of like the market that we have not addressed yet. And then three, maybe with the untapped TAM, we can sort of see which one has the best business value. For example, like there could be a lot of people in like TAM A, but TAM B, even though there's less people, like their value is higher, right? So I think that would be a good funnel for consideration. Mm -hmm. um, looking at my first solution, which is ChatGPT as your travel advisor, I think this is a use case that's pretty much applicable to most people. Obviously, there are constraints like socioeconomically, like if you don't travel a lot, like that's probably something that you would have to consider. But I want to make the assumption that most people will travel at least like once or twice a year. And I think that could, I could generalize that to like an entire population, right? Just doing like a rough estimate impact sizing. Um, so I, I would say like, let's just come up with numbers, like 300 million people, like let's say in the US and like, let's say they travel like twice a year. Um, like I think there's like a use case at least for like 600 million trips, right? Just throwing like a ballpark number in there. We can get FPNA and BizOps to validate this later, but this is just a sort of like ballpark sizing um, the second use case is sort of like ChatGPT as your QA engineer. Um, this is a very specific use case because now we're only able to target people who are engineers and like that is not the majority of the population. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think this has potential to be a high density population because although there are not that many engineers, I know engineers currently use ChatGPT a lot because like they're in like the tech field or they like are very familiar with this technology software. So I think right now that has the most amount of penetration. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna write that down. And then last one is ChatGPT as your personal assistant. Um, I'm trying to think how many people need a personal assistant in their lives, right? And I think it doesn't have to be at the level that we think like, oh, only like very important people or CEOs like need a personal assistant. I think everyone can use a personal assistant in their lives because everyone's like going through different things. Like everyone's very busy. Like you can just have someone consolidate all your tasks for you. So I think that one would also have the same appeal as the um, travel advisor one. And I, I would even say a bit more just because you have tasks every day and you only travel like two to three times a year. So I think that one has a lot of um, high utility. So the next step in our funnel for user acquisition is uh, untapped TAM. So out of these three ideas, how or like which idea has like the most unexplored or untapped in its current state? Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna X out software engineering slash QA right here because I think that is a very high like penetration area. I think if you're a software engineer and you don't know what chat GPT is, you're not going to be a software engineer for a long time. <laughs> so I think right away we can cross that one out because I think today there is a lot of penetration within the like QA or like software engineering use case for chat GPT. And with their goal of user acquisition, we're incrementally not going to be acquiring a lot more software engineering or QA engineering users there. Um, now, the only two I have left are the travel advisor use case and the personal assistant use case. Um, I think today, I'm trying to think, so what I'm trying to compare right now in my head is how many people use ChatGPT to plan trips versus how many people use ChatGPT as their personal assistant. Um, I think in terms of volume, there would definitely be a higher use case for the personal assistant one, just because 
you could use it every day mm -hmm. versus for travel you wouldn't use it as often um but at the same time I want I want to also think about like revenue purposes like I think there would be a lot of revenue potential with the travel advisor use case simply because like the possibilities are endless you can integrate with like booking.com all these hotels like airbnb activities um versus like completing your everyday tasks the only way i see this making money is if we have like chat gpt premium or plus or something and users like pay a lot more for sort of getting this personal assistant i don't see any of these integrations with like Google Calendar or like email or stuff um, working out unless the user pays a premium versus with the first example, I can see a user can pay a premium for a travel assistant plus um, partners, corporate partners like booking.com, Airbnb, like all these different travel tourist agencies would also double that premium as well. Mm -hmm. um, Given the fact that I know my goal is user acquisition, but I wanted a downstream impact on revenue, um, I think ultimately I'm going to go with the first travel advisor choice just because I see untapped revenue potential from there. Okay. Um, the next question I have is, um, let's just say um, you're talking about the travel agent um, helping the members to book hotels. Do you think OpenAI is at the right position to do this? Mm. So I think at its current state, like there would definitely still need to be approval processes. So for example, like as ChatGPT, I'd be able to select the itinerary for you. I'd be able to sort of find the hotel, find the flight for you. But what I would still need from a trust perspective is user confirmation. Like if you just plug in like, oh, I'm interested in going to Cancun and ChatGPT goes, done, your flight is on like March 28th. I'd be like, whoa, wait, I, I didn't say I wanted to go. I was just said I, saying like I was interested. Um, so I think that's like the one thing that would still need to be integrated right now is like, it can't be a fully automated process. Rather, it can be checkpoints that ChatGPT does each step of the way with the inclusion of human co like confirmation. So like, this is your itinerary. Does this look good for you? Yes. And then here's the hotel and like, ho like flight I found. Does this look good for you? Do you want me to book this? yes or no, find me another one. Um, I think with that layered in every step of the way, at least for like the first rounds of how we're going to launch this, um, I think then OpenAI would be in a better position to sort of create a product like that. Um, do you see any risk in terms of like executing your roadmap? Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Like I think trust is a huge one. Um, like from the user side and then also like from the vendor side, right? Like if we're building out this sort of travel agency, ChatGPT itself would exist as like a marketplace solution. So you have like two customers, which is like one, the consumer who is using ChatGPT to plan their trip or vacation. And then two, everybody on the other side, like the travel agencies, like the like booking.com flight providers. I think how will me, like as a consumer, how do I trust that ChatGPT will be like have my best interest and like offer me the best solutions and then as like an agency perspective like how will I know that like companies aren't paying open AI to like recommend their flights more or like companies aren't paying open AI to sort of suggest certain like hotels more um so I think like that is a huge risk of like how are we going to win consumer trust and then also how are we going to balance marketplace dynamics with um like vendors of this stuff um, and then other issues I can see is like, we'll really have to update this to be super up to date, um, within like real time data collection. Like if you run this query, let's say like book me the best flight, like yesterday, and then I don't book it until today. Like what if there is a better flight option available? Does ChatGPT automatically update you or is that something you'll have to run a query again to see? And then last thing is payment. I think payment is something that's like currently very sensitive that ChatGPT does not handle. But if ChatGPT were to go and book you your flights, book you your itinerary, you would either have to connect like your credit card information, disclose some sort of financial information to ChatGPT. And right now, like OpenAI has not positioned ChatGPT to be a financier, which would greatly open its use case for like 
a lot of other things it can do, but a lot of other lawsuits and risks it can incur because um, now ChatGPT GPT is like using your money, which is something that they've never done before. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm curious if you're um, right now you're uh, talking about uh, like a direction that we can go for, right? I'm very curious. What is your like vision of the end goal for this project? Like, how big do you think the market can be? And also, considering like travel is not a new use case, like in terms of like our lives, um, who are the major competitors, uh, and what are like the potential substitutes that you are uh, replacing uh, in this market, and why do you think you can win this competition? Okay, a lot of great questions, JJ. I'm writing them all down. Conviction, top competitors. Did I miss something? Conviction, top competitors. And what is your uh, long-term vision? Long-term vision. Okay, give me one minute. Okay. Okay. Um, so starting off with my sort of lofty long-term vision for what I see this is, I believe that Chad GPT can be the personalized travel agency for every person. That's like my vision statement. That's what I would pitch to like, you know, execs. Um, the way I see this going is like, yes, you're right. Stuff like this exists out there today, but stuff exists out there today. They're obviously not good enough because if it is, then traveling wouldn't be such a stressful, like time consuming thing that we currently do. I, there are like a lot of travel planners that exist out there today, but every time I travel for a trip, I'm still out here creating like a Google sheets of like where I want to go, what I want to do, coordinating with people on that trip. So yes, there are resources that exist, but there is nothing that exists out in the market today that can do this for you all in one place. And all you have to do is confirm inputs. I think that is like the conviction that I have for this. For competitors, like, yes, I see, you know, like travel agencies, like booking.com, like these are all websites and sort of groups of people that do this for you already. But I don't see them as competition. I see them as potential partnerships because I think what we can do is we can also like outsource a lot of like the work because on the front end, like chat GPT will be doing a lot of this stuff and making the action like super simple, but like the actual coordination of like booking the tours, like reserving the rooms, that's still stuff that like either the hotel like staff or the flight crew would be doing. And so I don't think this is like competition with those people. In fact, I think we're like working with them and we can do like a profit share of everything. The only like real competition chat GPT has is like, you doing it yourself today, like planning a trip, right? And I think it, that's not really direct competition because consumers want a solution that allows them to save time. Um, I think how I can see this evolve is it can go from being your personalized travel agency planner to being like a planner for you and all your friends. So like planning a trip by yourself is not that hard today, but planning a trip with like five or six other people is like super stressful. Everyone wants to do different things. How do you make everyone happy? I think ChatGPT also has a really good long-term vision use case for to like coordinate trips for like you plus like five other friends or like family members. Yeah. 
Um, do you have anything to add? Um, I think that's what my solution looks like. Did you want me to go into like a launch strategy or do a sanity check or anything? Or do you think I'm good to stop here? Um, I just have the last question since we're about to, um, that's yeah. um, I'm just curious, you, you, uh, you mentioned a lot of collaborations and also, um, you can build this travel agent for you and your friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering, um, in terms of go to market, um, what is the um like from from the enterprise from the collaboration side what is the like business development that you are looking for um you don't need to like dive too deep i just want to know like what type of like portfolio do you want to have and uh in terms of like your collaboration with your friends um currently there is a like collab plan uh within gpt that is like a team plan uh that people just pay a little bit more to collab on uh outside um i'm wondering like do you like how do you want to charge this but what is your like monetization for individuals yeah mm. okay so I think for the business model of partnership, I would like to partner with like airline partners, with hotel partners, with like Airbnb experience partners, or like just like people who offer like itinerary, like there's a whole like industry for this, like tourism, you know, I think there's a lot of partners you can find in there. And I think the business model is like sort of when chat GPT like books you as part of the itinerary, like it gets a cut of that commission. Like, because we are suggesting like, you as an airline partner, like Delta, like American Airlines, like we're recommending like you Delta over like United Airlines, like Delta should give a cut of the commission to whatever flight was booked using ChatGPT. Um, I think this is not something that's new. Like today, if you use a platform like Etsy or like some other like marketplace, like Amazon or something, the vendor will take a cut of the profit that you make. And so we can also just do the profit sharing model that's existing out in the market today. Um, in terms of the monetization strategy, there are two ways that we can go, right? I talked about like one, the consumer offsets it, which is as a member, I pay for like a chat GPT plus or like chat GPT gold premium, whatever, to sort of get like a travel agent as a perk for me. Like this wouldn't be available as part of the chat GPT basic version. Um, two, I think this could also be subsidized by companies, whereas like there is already an incentive for companies to offer this through ChatGPT. If there is a lot of adoption, everyone's like looking for their itineraries through ChatGPT on their phones, on their laptops. I think a lot of companies would be incentivized to provide like the profit sharing model with ChatGPT. And I think this can almost entirely be subsidized by like company partners, like airline, hotel, Airbnb, like experience partners. Um, I would do both because I love money like that. I would get all the airline, hotel, like experience tour agency partners to subsidize like the base cost and add revenue. And I would tell consumers, like if you want a real time, like really fast generation of like your itinerary, like you have to pay for an updated upgraded version of like ChatGPT versus if you don't pay for ChatGPT, you can only run like one query for one vacation itinerary, or you can only like, you know, it'll take longer for you to get that answer. So I would do both. Like consumer pays more for premium and also business profit sharing by partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about your interview? Um. So I think I like the fact that it was pretty, it, it felt logical to me. You can correct me if it didn't, but I think the way I go about it is a lot of how I solve for a lot of problems like I do today in real life, which is go big and then go small and see like what use case it could apply to. Um, I think things that I could have done better, I really like doing interviews and going into them with like a moonshot solution. So something I used to always do in my interviews back when I interviewed a lot was like, I would pitch my interviewer. I can give you like a very, you know, like incremental solution that we can build tomorrow. Or I have this moonshot idea that will like 10 X the business, but it could take two years to build. Which one do you want me to share? And it's always like fun to sort of go down those rabbit holes. Um, but I think today, like I had like, 
three answers that weren't that crazy that were like pretty I'm pretty sure people at OpenAI have definitely thought of this before um so like brainstorming wise this is like a marginal value add but I'm still proud of the fact that despite my answers are kind of basic um I did find a solution that seemed pretty feasible um at least like in a high level. I think when you're actually on the job, you'll have like multiple days and weeks to come up with a good solution. So with the 15 minutes that I got, I think I didn't do too bad. <laughs> but I'd love your feedback too, JJ. What did you think? Yeah, uh, overall, I think there's a pretty good answer. Um, definitely a pass on the interview, no question. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I think um, definitely you show your creativity, uh, strong communication. So one tip for the audience is when you are very like, like nice in terms of like your communication style and you always ask for feedback from your interviewer, it is easier for your interviewer to ask you more questions and direct you to the direction that they want you to go for. Mm -hmm. uh, so the type of communication that Amy present here, it is very um like open to any suggestions, right? And like, she is very confident in presenting her idea. And at the same time, she is very open to any su other suggestions. So this is a very good two-way communication that is building here. Um, so that is definitely a plus and very analytical. Uh, when I asked you for time, I was just trying to get like a rough feeling about like how big the time is. <laughs> you go, went straight to back up the annual calculation and you think very fast and you make up numbers to make assumptions. Uh, so that is really like a great plus and can show your skill set and like potentially doing like growth uh, or like monetization. I'm uh, very strong and- Not ads. <laughs> um, um, and also very executional. Yeah. Um, you talk about like the risks, the potential risks and the approval process. And um, and also like this is your vision and how can, what can you do to get there? Um, and also you, when you talk about like uh, sizing the opportunity, you talk about like if you are actually a product manager for this, uh, what type of cross functional partners you are collaborating, or, uh, collaborating with. So mm -hmm. these are very executional. And telling the interviewer that if you are on the job, you can actually like do that job pretty well. Um, so these are the definitely like green flags. And uh, two, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, this is the time. Uh, but um, uh, I think it is nice for you to, to talk about the strategy and I really value it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go with your answer like this, at the beginning of the question, you could have just analyzed the current strategy, right? Like if you want to be more strategic in terms of your answer, like you don't need to like jump into a strategy when you go to the solution, right? Mm -hmm. You can directly talk about, oh, I want to give you an overview of the current company strategy uh, before we dive deeper into the question, right? So you, to make sure that you and the interviewer are on the same page. Yeah. Um, I will be very curious since you want to like shoot for like more strategic solutions. I will be very curious about like how you analyze the current strategy. Like what are the portfolios that uh, OpenAI has as a company? And what are the like venture paths that they are betting on right now, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I would be curious how do you want to, uh, what do you want to say about that? Uh, and we'll probably if you have um like analysis, more competitive analysis um about the current situation, uh, yeah. it will be a huge plus for your strategic thinking. Yeah. Um, and another thing is, I feel like the <laughs> you're like going super strategic, and sometimes I'm a little bit lost on how it can click back to acquisition. Mm. Um, and I do uh, think when you talk about like uh, go-to-market strategy, you talk about uh, uh, building your go-to-market or building your campaign with your collaborators, right? With your uh, like, mm, like collaborating companies. Um, that is very smart. And I think when you said that, I was like, oh, this interview is pretty smart because basically you are getting back to, like, if you talk about how you think about this, basically the framework that you're using is these people are not using ChatGPT right now, right? And if you're talking about this user scenario, you need to get back to their existing habit and to touch on the users where their user journey is, right? That's your mindset. And it will be better if you point it, directly point it out. So I feel like, oh, like you are getting back to user acquisition. Um, and also you, you mentioned, uh, complete experience. This is actually a concept, uh, a whole product concept in like the book, Crossing the Chasm. Um, if you already mentioned this, it is a very good business sense. Um, I will be curious if you like can dive deeper to say, 
if you are targeting user acquisition, if the users having are already having the need right now, right? They want an agent or they want a, a travel agent or a, like a, a personal assistant, or they want to like ChatGPT help them with their research. Why are these users not using ChatGPT for this use case right now? Mm -hmm. right? That will be more clear, like what kind of user needs you are trying to tackle. Maybe they're hallucinating. Maybe it is not a whole product, like you said. Uh, maybe like people are not trusting this new technology enough to get to the total addressable market. Like yeah. there are pain points and um, that you want to tackle. Like if you are more clear about that, that would be great. Mm, yeah, solid. I think these are all really good points. Um, and I think looking back, like I feel the same way. Obviously, like if I were to redo this question, I think I would have approached it from a different perspective. I actually wrote things down about like their current portfolio, but then I was like, okay, do I want to spend the next five minutes talking about that or my strategy? And I think I opted for the strategy, but maybe I could have done both in a more concise way. So I think that's a very good point. Yeah, it is just super understandable because like people nowadays can talk about OpenAI for hours. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely don't want to do that in your interview. Yeah. Uh, definitely be more concise, but I will be curious because you already go strategic right, in your answer. I'll be curious how you think about this. Or you can tackle this when you mentioned about, like, the company strategy. Uh, that would be great. That would be a huge plus. Um, I saw a question in the chat. Uh, why don't we start with GPT being the personal assistant? It is more frequent use case and can generally develop users' habit of using GPT for personal life organization. Yeah, so I think I touched on this a little bit. Sorry if it wasn't clear during the mock interview, but the reason why I wanted to go for the travel agency use case is because, yes, you're right. Like there's definitely more people that could use the personal assistant use case. But my ultimate downstream revenue I wanted to translate was user acquisition to revenue. And I think it's a more lucrative space for travel agency because I'm thinking about the money potential for a travel agency. Like you can partner with like hotels, flights, like there's a lot of money to be made during that process. Travel is a very expensive thing to do. Um, versus for a frequent use case, like even if GPT is your personal assistant, it organizes your calendar, the only person that would subsidize that is the user. So you would add all that premium to the user. Like they would have to pay like $50 a month for a chat GPT personal assistant versus there are less people who will use a travel agency use case, but not only will the user be paying a premium, the partners will also be subsidizing that revenue. Mm -hmm. That will be one concern, basically the uh, margin um, on users. And the other uh, concern I have, I'm actually very happy when you choose travel agent, because if you choose personal assistant, I'll be attacking you during the interview. It's like, like we're going to end the interview right now. <laughs> 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 the interview so fast. <laughs> there is so much risk in like building a personal assistant, right? If you think about like, for example, uh, organizing email or like organizing your meetings or prioritizing your workload. If you think about like all the platforms with this data, either Microsoft or Google uh, Suite, like it is so hard for OpenAI to get access to those data. Not to mention like all these like big companies, they're trying to build their own uh, co-pilot whatsoever, right? So the combination there is not very friendly to start with. <laughs> Yeah, but travel is definitely a shortcut. Uh, there are already startups doing this. And also travel is highly depends on the building the ecosystem. Um, there is a lot of money in this area. Um, and also uh, you don't really have like, like your competitive, uh, your competitive uh, advantage is basically being like how fast you execute your business development and like building the ecosystem. Um, so that, I think that's a pretty smart choice. And if no further question, we're going to stop the recording.